Hello, 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 everyone. It's Brenda Douglas, a.k.a. Real Estate Diva, and happy Friday. I know that you are so excited to go into this weekend. And so, before you do, I have a challenge for you. I want you to evaluate your spending habits, right? Some people are very good at being conscious of what they're spending their money on, but then there are some people who um, get paid on Friday and then they're broke on Monday and they have no idea where their money went. Now, for some of you, you may think that's crazy, but no, I used to be there, right? <laughs> that's why I'm challenging you because I had to make some adjustments, right? Roy Bennett once said that change begins at the end of your comfort zone. And he is absolutely right. You have to get uncomfortable in order to make an adjustment, right? So the first step for us is going to be evaluate your spending habits. Now, let me just say that we're not going to, um, we are not going to develop a budget yet. Right now, we're just looking at what it is that we are doing with our money. Where is our money going, right? Change begins when you realize that one needs to be made, right? And change is a choice that begins with you, right? So we're going to be conscious of our spending habits, right? Because there's some things that we spend our money on and they are needs. They are necessities. They are fixed, you know, they're necessary every month, right? But then there are other things that are very, they are optional, right? They're wants, right? So we're going to pay attention to our spending habits, we're going to look at our spending patterns, and we are going to identify where we can make adjustments. Okay, so we are going to go over some needs versus wants, and then we're going to discuss some ways that you can start to evaluate or review your spending habits, right? Okay, so let's start with the needs. Now, some needs, some uh, expenses that are necessities include mortgage or rent, homeowners or renters insurance, because most places require that, right? Taxes, uh, property taxes, if you have a um, mortgage, some people have that property tax included in their mortgage payment. So when they make their mortgage payment, the tax payment is paid with it as well. But then there are some of us who... Um, we pay when the taxes are due here is July and January. We pay those separate, right? And so you, some people save up money to make those payments. And again, other people just have that payment taken out um, when they pay their mortgage. It depends on how yours, how your mortgage is structured, right? So you're going to take out, so taxes is a necessity, especially even if you have a, um, a home-based business, which you guys should all be striving for that in addition to working a full-time job. Anyway, auto insurance, health insurance, out-of-pocket medical expenses, which include like medication, right? Um, medication, life insurance, um, electric and, um, <coughs> excuse me, electric and natural. All right, I apologize. Gas is what I was going to say. Natural gas, so your utilities, basically. Uh, water, gas, electric um, utilities is a necessity. Okay, sanitation and garbage. Some people pay for that? Huh, interesting. I know HOA fees. If you have HOA fees, condo fees, they are mandatory. And you need to understand that they are just as mandatory as your mortgage. Your condo and your HOA fee can foreclose on you. The association can foreclose on you if you do not pay it, okay? So it is mandatory. HOA fees and condos fees are mandatory, right? And there could be dire consequences. Well, not dire, but as in you can lose your home. Um, so you want to be sure to pay those fees, right? And that is a necessity. Other things include groceries, toiletries, your, I wouldn't say car payment, but I guess for some of you, it is a necessity because some of you with your car payment, some of you are not metro accessible. It takes you, like you have to have a car because of where you live, right? So that's up to you. That's up to you to decide whether or not that car payment is a necessity. 
you know, but think about that with the car payment. You're not only paying the car payment, but you're also paying the insurance, right? And some of you live in metro accessible areas where you don't necessarily need a car payment, right? Because you can just jump on the bus. I know it's a preference, but at the same time, you're only making these sacri well, you're making these sacrifices until you can purchase your home. So sometimes you can, you know, you can um uh make the sacrifice until you accomplish your goal but a car payment um public transportation again some people are have access to public transportation you'll need money to get back and forth and pay the um you need money to get back and forth um to work um the cell phone and with landline. It's hard to believe that some people still have landlines, but it is true. Some people do, and some people have both. Now, that's the thing. Sometimes you don't need both, right? You don't need bo both. Sacrifice one if you're able to. At one time, it used to be that you needed a landline for your internet. Well, now that's not the case. You don't need a landline for your internet. So are you really, like, and some people have, so are you really just paying this bill? Um, when it's not a necessity, and I'm talking about the landline. The cell phone can go everywhere with you. But in terms of the landline, I'm not sure if there's anything where you need a landline. So I guess that's, that's that would be the point right there. If, it's, if the landline is a necessity for you to maybe do a job, you know, that's up for you to decide. But at the same time, there are people who have a cell phone as well as a landline. The question is, is it a necessity? Do you really need it? Some people have a landline and that phone never rings. That's why I got rid of mine because my cell phone was ringing more than the landline. So that's your choice. Student loans. It's not optional. You need to make some type of payment. Um, even if it is the minimum, you need to make a payment. Those of you with child support, child support and alimony payments that will affect whether or not you can get a house so you want to stay on top of that child care is a necessity as well now let's list some of your wants these are expenses that you can take or leave right it's not really really a necessity they're not really a necessi necessity they aren't a necessity right and that would include um jewelry and clothing now let me just say that some of you need uniforms uh like maybe black pants or khaki pants is what i've seen people wear so um in that instance then the clothing can kind of sort of be a uniform type of thing which becomes a necessity it's up to your discretion but for the most part clothing and jewelry is um is optional it is a want is an ex it is an expense that is an a is a want oh what is going on it is an expense that is a want it is not a necessity now let me just give you a little tip in terms of clothes and jewelry one of the things you can do is make an adjustment from getting always buying brand new clothes to maybe going to thrift stores and flea markets is another place so you know, cut that expense in half. There's a way to cut that in half, you know, and then you just take it and clean, clean it up. I have a thrift store group called Thrift Addicts on Facebook if you want to join that. Um, but there's a way for you to cut that expense, the clothing the expense, um, and you can still enjoy it and yet pay half price. All you're doing is looking for, I call it the, tra the treasure among the, what some would consider trash, right? Because they give it away. So anyway, that is a want. Dining out, eating out. Some people eat out every week, every weekend, you know. So, but that is an expense where you can sacrifice until you purchase your home, right? Alcohol. There's some people who, um, alcohol and then smoking, I'm going to put that in there with the smoking. Habits. There's some habits that are eating up your income, right? They're eating up your income. These are wants. They are not needs right some uh, people go out to clubs every weekend every friday you know every weekend they go to movies concerts events those are things that you might be able to sacrifice until you um sacrifice until you are able to purchase your home 
Now, let me just say that if you do not want to cut out these things all together, then maybe cut down on it. You know, instead of going every weekend, maybe go um, every other weekend. You know, there are ways that you can cut down. But remember that this is, you're not cutting this out completely. You're just cutting it out until, or you're making a sacrifice until you are able to purchase your home or move because, you know, in some instances you will still need to increase your credit score. You still will need to have money for, um, um, uh, what is it, um, inspections, you know, for your new home. So, you know, these are ways that you can cut out these expenses that you, that are really wants and not necessities, right? Travel expenses. Um, people, there are some people who travel all the time, air tickets, bus tickets, you know, train tickets, hotels, rental cars, all of that stuff adds up. And these are not uh, necessities. These are things that you want and things that can be sacrificed until you purchase your home. Cable. <laughs> there are some people who still have um, and I can think of two of them right off the top of my head that are really, really expenses, these, uh, expensive, these cable and streaming packages that are $60 and above, right? Why not get the cheapest and why not get the, um, or cut it out all together until you are able to move. For me right now, I cut, I cut the cord with cable, uh, months ago. I have Amazon Fire firebox right this firebox already has movies i mean a whole bunch of streaming apps already on it with tons of movies right so consider sacrificing um the streaming services until again you can get to where you want to go right until you can purchase your home there's some people who go to beauty salons Every weekend or every other weekend, guys, get their hair done, their nails done, their toes done. Like that is really the thing about getting your nails done. I think they're beautiful. However, once you start doing it, it's like they end up looking raggedy and then you're constantly running back, right? It's kind of like they get you hooked. But at the same time, it looks beautiful. But at the same time, that's a lot of money. I mean, think about it. For the nails alone, I think it's like $30. When If you get a pedicure and a manicure, 30 and above, you know, every two weeks, that adds up, guys. That adds up tremendously. So use that money. Like I said, sacrifice make some sacrifices until you can um, get your home, right? If you're planning on moving at all, whether it's, whether you have a home already and want to move to another one or whether you intend to purchase a home, you want to make some sacrifice. You want to sacrifice on your wants or your expenses that are kind of flexible, not kind of flexible, they are flexible until you can get you know, to where you want to go. So you want to, there's several things that you want to do to be able to evaluate your spending habits, right? One of the first things you can do is pull your bank statements, right? And I want you to pull your bank statements for the last three months, right? You're going to pull your um, bank statements and you are going to highlight the expenses that are, wants, not the necessities, just the wants, okay? Because I want you to clearly see um, which expenses can are flexible, right? Um, if, now, if you want, you could also hi highlight the necessity, the expenses that are necessities in a different highlighter, different color highlighter, because you're going to look at all of the expenses. The main things I want you to focus on um, are the expenses that are wants as opposed to needs, right? So you're going to identify the expenses that you can um, sacrifice until you can purchase a home. And the best way to do that, again, is by looking at your bank statements, either the hard copies or online, and you want to pay attention to um, what you're spending your money on. And let me just say, point of sale transactions, the one that say, POS, once you, or even ATM, once that money is gone, you cannot 
you cannot, you don't always remember where you spent that money, right? So if I were to stop at an ATM, pull out $100, right? My bank statement will say $100, but it won't say the small things that I've spent this $100 on, right? So, um, so what I want you to do is I want you to, first of all, use a trackable method to be able to, um, to make your payments, right? And that would include a debit card. I don't know if people still use a check. Hmm, I think some people do still use a check. <laughs> so anyway, use a traceable payment method so that you can see what it is that you're spending your money on, right? You want it to be traceable. Now, let me just say that you need to be very, very careful if you have a, um, I don't want to call it a bad spending habit, but you want to be careful because let me just tell you that one swipe can wipe away thousands of dollars, right? Or deduct thousands of dollars. So you want to be very careful. There was a time when I would have to leave my debit card at home because I didn't like to see the cash leave in my hand. So for me at that time, the cash was the better option because then it shows me, okay, this is how easy money can slip out of your hand or you know, be dwindled down, you know. So for me, I had to leave the debit card at home sometimes, right? Now that I've got control over it, I'd rather use the debit card because then it's traceable. I can look on my statement to see all the places that I went. You know, I can see the, oh, okay, you went to Burger King, you went to, you did this, you did that, you did, I can see the transactions on my bank statements, and then I can say, okay, so you need to pull back from that, right? So you're going to use a traceable method, payment method. The other thing you're going to do is save your receipts, right? So again, in some places, some places, if you decide to use cash, save your receipts so that again, you can evaluate your spending habits and you will know what it is that you spend your money on. Now, let me warn you that some of you may, after tracking your expenses, you may realize that you don't have a lot of wiggle room. Once you pay all of your bills, you don't have much left over um, after you pay your necessities, right? If that is the case, if your paycheck is, is so stretched thin after you pay your bills, first of all, be grateful. Um, because you have a place to live and you have a place to sleep and you have food to eat. So be grateful. That's the first and foremost. First, yeah. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to make a plan of action to increase your income by any means necessary, okay? No one should be living paycheck to paycheck and um, have little room to um, move because life is unpredictable, right? So, Again, um, you need to make a come up with a plan of action to increase your income. If that means speaking to your employer about increasing your salary, then so be it. If that means starting a business, a, a home-based business, then so be it. If that means, um, if that means starting a little side gig, not little side gig. Sorry, if that means starting a side gig, then so be it. The point is, you want to increase your income by any means necessary. If that means going back to college, if that means getting a certification so that you can pull in more income, then so be it. But you must come up with a plan of action to increase your income. Now, let me just say that there are some printable expense tractors that you can get. These are like maybe PDFs that you can download and um, write out your expenses, you know, if that helps you. You have to find out what works for you, but there are some printable expense trackers. There are also apps that you can use um, to track, help you track your expenses, you know. Um, so there are some tools that you can use to stay on top of that, right? The main thing is you want to uh, track your expenses by any means necessary, right? So um, listen, guys, I hope that this has been helpful to you. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and share 
this channel. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening. And listen, if you have any questions about ways that you can procure, retain, or preserve your home investment, reach out to me at realestatedivabrenda at gmail.com. Don't forget to join the Homeowners United Facebook uh, group. I invite you to do that for the realities of home ownership and then also resources and just to connect with homeowners. Feel free to leave a, leave a comment or feedback and listen, whether you are buying or selling a home, keep your head lifted, your hopes high, and remember that the deal is not over until the keys are exchanged. Have a blessed day.